Hello, beautiful soul. Here I am on Friday. I want to talk to you about something that we all know very well. What happens when the stresses of the world are coming into a home, coming to the way that we speak to the people we love, and kind of creating tensions. And of course, we all have our um, little, little family or partnership, or we come from a family, and we all know that those relationships and dynamics inside homes can be uh, sometimes intense. It's mostly karmatic, so there's always something to learn from people around us. And I wanted to look today on the subject of how do we talk to ourselves and how do we talk to our uh, partner or children and also some of the things that we all do and and uh, that can a uh, little bit um, put our flow or peace of mind or calm uh, out the window so the first thing to do is to breathe because we all know that we can do better uh, and it's a complete human thing, especially shout out to all mothers so let's have a breath so we can look at this subject with no judgment, just with the power of our observation and insight and um, look at the way we are speaking and how we can keep our home and family life or partnership life a bit happier. So, how was your mother when you were a child? That's very interesting because a lot of our behaviors we're learning, of course, from our parents. But when we grow in older, we can look at them as people and to see the life that they were trying to create, what they were facing, we're understanding them in another level. And there are a few things that I understand about my mother that gave me an insight about myself. Um, um, Actually, I'm doing a 21 challenge, 21 days challenge with Chopra, uh, with a group of friends. And one of the questions of the assignment of the day was to write about your mother and about similarities. So sometimes, a few years ago, when my children were smaller, I found myself shouting, totally frustrated. Uh, I'm also very expressive and I can be very loud. Um, and I was going like, oh my God, I sound like my mother. <laughs> <laughs> which which a lot of us think that we uh, can do better until we are in their shoes. So when I hear a person uh, saying that they don't want to be like their mother or their father, um, that's actually a pretty much um, guaranteed that you will be because only after you work out the shadows of some things uh, with some of the closest people in your life uh, then you will not repeat them so when i noticed that i was shouting i was thinking okay how what how how without judgment i can do something better and i went to investigate I went to investigate who i am went to investigate what was the circumstances uh, of my mother or the parent I was in. And that is what I would like us to do before the weekend. So if, if you're going to observe your family or your partnership and the dynamics and when things are coming into stress, what are the things that you are saying to yourself and saying to them that can be changed? So I noticed two things, which are when you're learning from your own relationship with your mother or your father, it's big subject. It's subject that will carry you through your whole life. Uh, and that's why they're so important. You can learn, you can empower yourself so much just by uh, understanding your own relationship with your mother and father and coming into understanding. But let's look at you and let's I look at myself. How do we talk to our loved ones? And most important, one of the things I would like to say about the what not to do to keep a happy home, it is to talk to ourselves in a way that is not kind or favorable or fair to, uh, to the person we live with. So if there is something that happens a lot when people break up, uh, or divorce it's because there is a long period of things cooking outside of the scene under the surface there are this self-talk 
making a case against someone. And because in this month we talk about negative self-talk, it came into the subject, the things that I say about the person I'm starting to distancing myself from. So if we are in a relationship, and if you are here and you understand what I'm talking about, please let me know you're here. Um, in a relationship where there is a bit difficulties, what are the things that you are saying to yourself about that person? And that can be interesting because sometimes we will have and build a kind of a case that makes you not be fair to the other person. Do you know what I mean? Okay, so let's say, let's say uh, you are with someone and you're starting to build a case about the fact, you know, sometimes you hear that people saying, I cannot stand my husband, the way he's eating his food, making me want to die. And you go like, okay, because when we were in love and everything was going good and lovely, we loved everything about them. Also the things that we are, uh, and are not from our world, right? Hi, Jones. So when we are starting to have a negative self-talk, not only to ourselves, but also against somebody around us, even our own child or our partner or our colleague, and we start to develop this case like, oh, here we're doing again. Here, look how he's eating his food all the time, doing it like that. And you build a case and these irritations are festering. This is the worst thing you can do for your life and to your home life, especially if you have a family. Building a case against my child always does this and this and this, and this is starting to become something that you're saying to yourself. So what I would like us to do this weekend, just with the power of our observation, to notice where we are um, having a negative self-talk against someone else. When we do it against ourselves, there is a lot to do about that. But when we do it against someone that is in our environment and we are not fair because we are not communicating, we're just piling up amount of stuff. Oh, yes, yes, I know, I know it is painful, but there is something that we can do and it starts with the power of our mind. When we're in a relationship with someone and there is something that doesn't work and in relationship, there's always something that doesn't work. That's part of it. The thing is that sometimes you are growing through that thing that doesn't work and it makes you a bigger person and it's expanding your heart into a new territories. So relationships are the most difficult things for our brain to do. It's the most evolved things to do, but it's not easy. It's not easy, but it's worth it when it works. But if it works, it also doesn't work because that's that's part of it. It's a moving. It's like water. It's coming and going. It's it's it has a high tie and low tie and can drive us sometimes crazy. So there's few things what I would like us to notice and to do now. In this weekend, just give yourself time to observe with no judgment, and really with being nice to yourself and all of the time that you are building a case against someone. And I'm sure you build a case against someone because this is a human thing. We all do that. And try just to notice what is it that you're saying and realize that this thing that they're doing, for example, he is never, mm, 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 or it's always doing this and this. This is something that is opportunity for us to see how we are being triggered. There's actually very good processes to do uh, with this, but I cannot do that in Facebook Live. So we will have a healing sessions about that. Um, but just for this weekend, just you know, with a power observation to realize oh, I'm building a case against someone, especially if it's somebody you're married to or are going out with, that can be the end of that relationship. And instead of doing that, instead of building a case unconsciously, I would like you to take a piece of paper and to write to yourself the things that this negative part wants to say give it like 10 sentences that they can puke out whatever it has to say because sometimes it just needs to come up and after you did that you just take that thing which is not valuable definitely don't send it as a letter to someone you know, to the person you were talking to and just burn it and realize that was your own cleansing and now take another piece of paper and write 
in another field of of patience let's bring us put yourself some glass of tea a cup of tea and a candle and just write to that person what you really want from them what you hope that they will understand what you want that they will do and you don't even have to say that to them just write it on a paper for yourself to see this is what i would like and because i'm not getting this thing that i didn't even tell them i'm building a case of all this negativity and allow yourself to clean up this negativity so so you can own it and then you can transmute it so let's breathe out oh, let's take a breath we all have relationship and there is so much tension around the world and so much tension outside and sometimes we're taking it to our relationship to our home so let's take a moment just adjust right <laughs> yes all right take a breath ah let's latch us with forgiveness and kindness and softness take this thing out and let's do it again Ooh, there is also a very nice process of going through the ladder of emotions that really, really works. But for now, I'm sure you have a person in mind, and I'm sure you know what case you're building against them. Okay, you're going to take the time to clean that up. And just be honest, what is it you're not getting from that person? And just agree between you and you. <laughs> The bigger you that you are allowing yourself to receive that to create a dynamic and energy where you're going to receive that understanding from this other person that you're going to be receiving the love or attention or the conversation that you want so I talking about do's and don'ts uh, to keep our happy home. And happy home can be even if you're one single person. A happy home is between you and you. A happy home is between you and your environment, between you and your partner, between you and your kids and partner. No partner, yes partner, yes kids, no kids, your animals. A happy home is something that you own to yourself. To live yourself in a happy, uh, honest kind home that's where self-love comes but also in your environment and when relationships are coming in of course it becomes a bit more complicated but that's why life is so beautiful so when you realize what is it the thing that you want i would like you to close your eyes maybe you will do it now because i see susanna is here and delisa is here and i'm sure that you are capable at this moment to use the power of your mind to manifest this thing in your relationship that can bring you what you want, that you can manifest this thing that you need. So let's just close our eyes and we focus on the person that we want to talk to. I would think you should do that after you clear that some of the toxic things, but even, even without, if you can come and bring yourself into a state of mind of mindfulness it is the moment you close your eyes and you are becoming aware about yourself your your brain wave is going from the crazy beta that running the world into alpha which we are now doing when we're closing our eyes and when you breathe and you let yourself settle and you're feeling that you're landing in yourself landing in your heart landing in your body with total patience and i can feel all of us and everyone else that will ever watch this and we all need this whole area of our heart let's just give it attention even you can touch your your heart just because it's immediately activating healing let's have activate also our inner smile a little smile which you do to your heart and let's feed this first i have a feeling that we need to feed this first before we talking to this other person that is triggering us taking one big breath and allow yourself totally to be in 
in here, in where you're feeling your body. And you will also see that there is a color. There is a color that is now showing you that energy of being totally in your body, in peace, in calm, in nurturing. There is a color that is now showing itself to you. Just observe what you see, which color is it. And let's take another breath just to anchor the color. Oh. And now we give permission for ourselves to be in nature. Just imagine that you're on the top of the mountain and you can see the sky and you can see clouds and you are watching the whole world under you. And you literally have wings behind your back. It's your spirit guide, absolutely present for this moment. I didn't mean to, but here we are, started to do some kind of a lovely process. Take another breath to anchor your wings and open your heart to the view. And knowing that we are bringing our brainwave mind into a deeper than alpha. We still feel our heart. Some of us still feel the heart. And it's okay. And when you feel ready, bring the person that you want to talk to. The person who you have a fight with or irritation or you're building a case against. And just see them soul to soul. They are not going to be their own personality. They are going to be a higher version of themselves. This is a wonderful way to communicate. So, before you start to say anything, give that person the most beautiful flower you can imagine. And it can be also a fantasy flower. Just let your own creation bring to you and you give them amazing flower. And that flower will give them love and kindness and creativity and happiness. Just see that in your mind eye. <sighs> now just imagine and see them giving you a beautiful flower. Or something else. They giving you something that you can use. And now while you are looking at this person in this new energy, I just say to them what you need from them and what you want them to do or to say to benefit both of your relationship. And take a minute for that. You have all the time in the world. And there is golden light coming on both of you. Just washing away some things that need to be washed away. He is supported or she is supported, the other person and you are supported. And there is higher forces at, at, at play, helping you have a beautiful communication. Take it in and anchor. And just say your say. Say it is what you want. And let the person answer if they received. And what they, what they are willing to do for both of your benefits. And listen what the answer is. Is another wave of golden rain washing. And if you feel like, if it's fitting to your situation right now, 
just invite that person to hold your hands. And both of you agree to communicate from this space and resolve things between you that need to be resolved from this place, on the top of this mountain, close to the clouds, in this fresh air, holding each other's hand, looking soul to soul, and allow your both higher self to discuss that with each other. And this will be something that is now in action. And you're in your night sleep, in your subconscious mind, in your unconscious. You, both of you, are now making a new way to communicate. And it will bring both of you some more peace, better understanding, compassion, love, unconditional love, not only romantic love, unconditional love, <sighs> and more space, and really fresh air. And imagine yourself as a home, your home as a home, your relationship as a home, and all of it is now being blessed and ready to create a new dynamic that has much more flow in it and much more interaction and creativity. Yeah, you deserve that. And everyone around you deserves that. So let's take one big breath and come back to ourselves to be in this moment. Yeah. I would say to, um, to activate your hands for a second, open your eyes if you're ready, and put it into your, uh, to your lungs. So we have sometimes a feeling of grief that is very old. And we say to this grief, it's okay, I can see you. And we give it a few hours, a few days to just melt away. And tonight, when you go to bed, just bring yourself back into this top of the mountain, holding the hands of this person you are smoothing the energy with, and see if there's something else you want to talk about. And see if there's somebody else you want to bring into this mountain. Realizing that you are abandoning this habit of building a case against someone and have negative self-talk about them. Also, negative talk to yourself that you think, oh, I'm always fucking it up. <laughs> Flash. We're doing it differently now, from this moment on. Okay. Now, I would love if you can share with me um, your question or your, or your experience. So maybe I can talk further about that. But I think this process is really, really helpful. And I have to say, I had a complicated relationship with my mother which I started to tell, uh, but it's also one of the most powerful and beautiful relationships of my life. And I used this method when I needed to share things with her, but she didn't listen. And I also knew that if I will say anything, she will win over because she was tougher than me. And, and Creating another channel of communication with a person that we love, where you talk between higher self and higher self, instead of just personality, wounded personality with wounded personality. It's such an amazing way. And after I will finish, my mother will call and she say, I just realized that this thing that I said last month, last week was, it was so amazing. And our relationship grew from that. And I recommend it for everyone to to approach communication and relationship on both levels. Actually, it's more than two, but 
We have the one that we talk, why didn't you do the dishes? And there's another one saying, when you don't do the dishes, I feel that you don't care about me. And just narrow it down to take the toxin out, if you can, by writing and then releasing and then communicate. What is it that you want? What is it that you need? Do the same with kids. Do the same with um, colleagues. Okay, I hope you're going to have a wonderful weekend. Nobody's telling me anything. Nobody writing me something. I love questions, please. So I wish you an amazing time. My husband has a birthday today, which is very special. I realized later in life that the day that you were born, energetically, it is very powerful. You should make a wish on your birthday. And have a great weekend, and I see you soon, and I hope you create yourself a happy home, a happy home, a happy home. Namaste.